Um, I'm Joshua. I'm going to tell you that adversarial um, examples transfer from image models to the human brain. Um, and due to time, let's just move on. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so um, one of my personal largest fears about AI in the medium term future is that it will allow targeted manipulation of, of people. And I think as the capabilities of the AI increase, so will the power of the manipulation that can be achieved. Um, sometimes I find that I spend like two hours straight like scrolling on Twitter with one finger, and I'm like, what did I just do? And Twitter is like a dead stupid ML algorithm rearranging like pre-existing content. I think if you were able to generate live the like video, audio, and text targeted at my particular brain from my history of online interactions, like I wouldn't stand a chance. I will be as addicted or as outraged or buy whatever brand of soda you tell me to buy. Like, so I'm really worried about this. Um, I think maybe adversarial examples um, provide maybe a motivating example that this kind of extraordinarily targeted control um, is possible of, of, of a neural system. Um, so here, for instance, you like have a small perturbation you can add to an image, which convinces a machine vision classifier of absolutely anything you wanted to believe. Um, in this case, that a, that a bear is a truck. Um, but humans are not artificial neural networks, so does this actually apply to us? Um, let's run an experiment. So what we're going to do is we are going, I, we actually ran a whole suite of different experimental conditions, but I'm just going to describe one in the, in the talk. Um, so we had subjects look at a screen, and we showed them two images, and we said, okay, which of these two images makes you think it's more like a cat? Um, and, and of course, neither of them is a cat, but, but you still, you have to choose one of the two images. Um, and we can, we can try this ourselves. So um, raise your hand if you think the image on the left um, looks more like a cat. Okay, and now raise your hand if you think the image on the right looks more like a cat. So that is actually a surprisingly effective demonstration because I would say there's about 50% more hands raised for the image on the right. And in fact, the image on the right has been adversarially perturbed in order to make computer vision algorithms believe that it is a cat while well, the image on the left has been adversarially perturbed to make computer vision algorithms think that it is a, a truck. Um, and so I'll, I'm just, I actually am doing better on time, so I'm gonna just leave these up for like five seconds so you can like try to find differences. <laughs> this is like an epsilon equals two perturbation. Um, okay, so let me just show you our results. The results are that in fact, subtle adversarial manipulations that work on an ensemble of computer vision algorithms after like additional like geometric augmentation um, transfer to humans. Um, here, this plot, the x-axis is the perturbation magnitude of the adversarial example. Um, the effect gets stronger the larger the perturbation you allow. Um, the image you saw was perturbation magnitude two. Um, the dashed line is chance performance and um, the y-axis is how much we were able to bias human perception. And you can see even epsilon equals two, it's like a two to 3% bias in, in human perception. Um, so this is super cool scientifically, maybe because it suggests that there are like even closer and more surprising correspondences between subtle behaviors of artificial neural networks and the human brain. Um, it's also maybe quite worrying because it suggests that some of the like more sci-fi strong kind of like targeted manipulations that we are able to do in order to make artificial neural networks behave in bad ways um, also transfer to some degree and to the human brain and the human brain may be susceptible to similar things. So we should worry more about like manipulative super stimuli targeted at us.